Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Thursday 30. It, it is Thursday morning and it is 8 a.m. And we are so grateful that we have this platform to be able to share 30 minutes or maybe 40. Depends. It's been running <laughs> for it. I should, I've been thinking about calling it Thursday 40. Uh, but uh, we are so grateful that you're going to join us for this virtual interactive Bible study. So we take 30 minutes and we break down an Old Testament chapter and a New Testament chapter from our daily Bible reading plan. So for all of those joining us here in the Conejo Valley, that's part of Atmosphere, uh, or maybe you're watching in Vegas uh, from our church there or our Bakersfield church, or maybe you're watching uh, from another state and uh, you're just joining us because somehow, some way you're connected with us. We are grateful to have you a part of it. So let's get the interaction going, all right? So take a moment right now. If you're on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, drop us a comment and let us know where you're watching from. How's the weather where you live? And then while you're doing that, I'm going to introduce today's co-host, who is a repeat uh, guest. I was going to say repeat offender. <laughs> no, I hope not. But that's not the, that's not the way I should say that. Uh, so Malad Gurgis, give it up for Malad. Hey. AJ, AJ, I need like a, a little like DJ, like uh, oh. like clap. For <laughs> yes, right, exactly. But Milad, good. welcome back. Good to be back. Good to be back. So, yeah. you know, I went to Africa and to Europe this summer, and I was thinking about you the whole time because you travel all over the place for your job, yep. for your career, and... Uh, I think since I went to Europe, you've been back there three times. I think so. <laughs> I just came back last week. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and your family dynamic. And you got something really special happening I, here in another week and a half. I do. I do. I was thinking about that. Yeah. So I guess I'm the traveling man. This, this year has been, I think, one of the most, at least as far as international travel. I was thinking I've been to Japan, to Australia, the first time since the pandemic. Like Jim said, Europe like three times. Um, we had a fun time, uh, my wife and I, in what Amsterdam after a work trip. Um, so yeah, it's we've been running around, um, and I've been running around. But yeah, we um, we've been at Atmosphere now three years. Um, nice. My wife Mary and I, and it's been just a fantastic experience. Um, and uh, we have three kids. We we can say driving in this morning, we have n no longer teenagers. So uh, we're uh, we're almost at that that like last phase. So Mariah, Mariah turned twenty uh, in September. Wow! Uh, so uh, that's that's wild, and uh, yeah. So in I think it's less than ten days now, uh, Michael gets married. So wow. uh, it'll be the second the second marriage in mm -hmm. the uh, Gerges household. So well, for those of you that yeah. watch Atmosphere Live, you've been seeing his son uh, leading worship lately. So Michael's part of our full-time staff here at Atmosphere, and uh, he graduated Azusa Pacific yep, yep. Uh, last spring, and uh, now he's getting married in the fall. Yeah, yeah, proud of him. I don't know if he's on, or, but uh, proud of him. It's been it's been really cool, just uh, even just watching him come in as a as a worship you know leader and just stepping into that and seeing how, how God's working in his life. So love you, bud. Love you, bud. Michael. Yeah. Well. Let's check in. Let's check All in. Right. And you got more peeps uh, watching on uh, yeah. Instagram, so I'll let you go first. We have 20. Wow. Nice. Um, we have uh, painting with watercolors. Hello. Good morning. Um, I think that's Michelle. See. Oops. Let me make good sure morning, I'm Michelle. Sure. The right. Right let's here see. in Thousand Oaks. Uh, the Love Three Lies. Hello. That's the other reason I give you Instagram because of <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the names. Uh, Mel, LOL 16, Pamela and the Plum Line. Oh, that's our Pamela. That's our Pamela. What's up? Cheryl Powers. Cheryl Powers. XTMR. She used um, to cut my hair back in Bakersfield back in the day, but now they're in North Carolina. Oh, nice. Uh, Miss you guys. I think it's Cheyenne uh, Wishmeyer. Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. That's uh, John and Cheyenne. Uh, she, oh, I, they live in Simi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So Simi representing. We're close to you. Uh, Katie Scholl. Katie. Uh, Young Life CLU. Nice. I love Young Life. We love Young Life. Um, AJ, is that, is that you or is that, <laughs> is that your friend? 
that was an accident. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Who is the new Young Life director over there again? That's, uh, That's uh, Mackenzie, Mackenzie Rottler. Rottler. That's right, Mackenzie. Okay. Um, Angela's Dreaming. Did I say that one already? And then um, Monica Marie from Bakersfield. Nice. Um, Good morning, Monica. Good morning. All right. So uh, in Facebook <laughs> some, world, oh, said, so you got some more? B, I don't know who the B Barth nine says Milad is. I think it's a goat. I, I hope that's not. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know. He doesn't mean the animal. Yeah. He means the greatest <laughs> of all time. Thank you. I'm not sure who that is, but thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook world, the Philip Rivera is on here. So what's going on? Uh, we've got. Denise Tucker watching. Okay. Ray, good morning to you. It's your great your seeing wife, you. Your wife's on. Tara. So uh, Alba's watching. Good to see you. Maria, thank you for posting that. Uh, we've got, uh, so sometimes if you don't leave a comment, we can't see your name. So that's why we always ask you to drop us a comment so we can see it. Uh, and we've got uh, Cipriano Hill uh, from Bakersfield. So good to have you guys. Maria, good to have you. And YouTube land, AJ? Uh, yes. Mm. AJ's our tech director off camera, so. Right. Yeah. Right now, we've got Madeline Parrott on YouTube, and that's all I see. She normally is on Facebook, so Madeline from Idaho. So good to have you on YouTube. Okay, so Malad, would you pray us in as we get into the festivals of Absolutely. Numbers chapter 29 and 2 Timothy chapter 2? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for this morning. Just thank you for um, your spirit. Thank you for your word. Uh, thank you just for this daily plan where we can mm -hmm. um, have a, a rhythm to um, just seek your, your word, seek yes. your truth. And uh, Father, just as we studied on uh, this last Sunday, just thank you for uh, the breath of life in mm. our soul. And I pray, Lord, that um, that this this word, yes, absolutely, would just breathe in us and breathe um, just through those who listen to it today, those, those who pick it up later on YouTube, uh, that your word would just be alive and active and that uh, whatever we say this morning uh, would be truly um, just your spirit speaking through us, um, not, not anything out of our own minds or will, mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer. Beautiful prayer. So talk to us, Malad. Numbers chapter 29. By the way, if you guys have been following our plan, you know, we go through the Bible and just, you know, once we get to the end, we go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Genesis and, you know, Exodus, and, and now we skip Leviticus, and, and we went into Numbers. I'm just, I'm seeing a lot of these stories with a fresh lens. Yeah. Yeah, the whole Exodus journey and just them discovering God and, mm. and this whole adventure. It's just pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I just love in general how just God's Word, again, is works with, with the seasons that we're in. Mm -hmm. they, they always interweave whatever we're talking about on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. whatever we're studying, it all, it all comes back together. So yeah, the fun, the fun part about you know, numbers is, um, in a way, we, all these, these last three festivals, um, we just got through them in, in our own calendar. That's true. Uh, right? So this, this festival of, tr of trumpets, mm -hmm. um, which is Rosh Hashanah. So that actually just occurred. The Jews just celebrated that September 15th. We have uh, a few guys that attend Atmosphere that are also part of this Jewish temple, mm -hmm. uh, synagogue here in town. And yeah. one guy like is in the choir or something. You know, And I've never been to... Uh, a Jewish temple. Yeah. Uh, I should do that on a field trip. Fun. I should, yeah, just go check it out. That would be fun. But uh, yeah, he was all here excited going, today is Rosh Hashanah. And then he was like, today is Yom Kippur. And yeah. So interesting. Yeah. We just celebrate those. No, exactly. And it's it's like, again, these. this is all, it, it's the story of a real people and the mm -hmm. story of a real God. And so, yeah, the, the some of the, the, the takeaway, this whole, the trumpets, um, the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. So it goes back also to um, uh, Numbers 10, 
where God tells Moses to craft the silver trumpets to mm -hmm. call the people, um, and and they had some they had purposes to uh, gather the people. You know, you had millions of people to try to to go out and start moving, mm -hmm. uh, move the tabernacle. It was also like a shout of uh, calling out to the Lord. Um, and then if an enemy attacked, there was another sound of the trumpet mm -hmm. to again warn the people. Um, and so again, it's this, God brings this um, remembrance around it. Mm -hmm. But also what I loved is as we fast forward, um, there's, a, there's a trumpet call at the end. So we had the trumpet call of Moses, but in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, um, it, the Bible talks about the last trumpet where we will all be, where we will rise. And where uh, again Jesus comes again in uh, in victory. So you know this. I I love music. I mean, I guess uh, with a with a son and a daughter who's mm -hmm. involved in music, and and we grew up with music. But there is something about a trumpet. It is just I agree um, with you. there is just something about a trumpet blast mm -hmm. that just you know I, yeah. I think it gets to to all of us. Um, Do you remember in the '90s ska music? Did yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> super tones, <laughs> yeah. super tones, strike back. Uh, we were somewhere yesterday, and they were playing some ska, and I hadn't heard it in a while. But what made ska so unique was the trumpets being put in with this like alternate rock sound, yeah, and it yeah. just create. But it just there is something about mm. trumpets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it carries. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine yeah, being in a de in a desert and mm -hmm. there's a trumpet, you're gonna hear it. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Corinthians, like, like Paul is giving us these clues, like the return of Christ mm. is going to be connected with, you know, the blast of trumpets from heaven. Right. And you see all these other events of Jesus' life correlated with these feasts exactly. that are in the Old Testament. And so a lot of Bible scholars believe mm that the coming back of Christ, the rapture of the church, is going to be in alignment with Rosh Hashanah. Mm. And so if you even Google this, you're going to yeah. see like all yeah. kinds of writings and articles and YouTube videos talking about this. And, and it's, it's interesting. Mm. You know, we know it's in Scripture explicitly that we don't know the day or the yes. hour, yep. but Jesus does tell us you will know the season. Mm -hmm. So, so is it plausible, my lad, that this is a clue that it's going to come into the season of the Feast of the Trumpets? I, I is it plausible? It, I think it's very plausible. Um, you know, we were, we're, we're doing the Rooted Seers, which has been fantastic. And the, this last week was on creation. Mm. And, we, and you, you also talked about creation. Yeah, you know, that's right? true. Yeah. Right? So it, for those of you that aren't familiar, Rooted is kind of like our... Uh, Christianity 101, it's it's to help people like know God and, and really discover their purpose. So it's pretty yeah, exciting. A fantastic study. And, and we just went, so creation, God sets creation in order to mark times and seasons. Mm. And again, just knowing the, the character of God, this God of order. I mean, we read in numbers and just everything around Moses, the tassels, the, mm. the, just the ornateness of how the, um, you know, the priest, Mm -hmm. We're supposed to dress, so it's very plausible that the God of order, the God of seasons, would again cover these seasons and these very clear uh, signs and times uh, for yeah. His people. So, right. I mean, our our job is to watch, yeah, um, and that's what the Bible says. I mean, we're not going to try to predict days and, right. and hours, yeah, um, but but what we're called to do is watch and be alert. Now, yeah. in this uh, age of AI, uh, which <laughs> Uh, Tara, we got a new app for us. It's going to help us with our staff uh, page with our, our pictures. Anyway, so with the AI technology, I saw a video online where it was somewhere in the Holy Land, and everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? And they were like putting trumpet blasts, like, because hmm. the shofar, right, oh, is yeah. the, the yeah. ram's horn, yeah. which is the yeah. original yeah. blast of the trumpet. Mm. And uh, you could hear this like shofar, and I'm like, man, this is fake news. <laughs> ah, you know, and I just, I get frustrated because it's like we run with these narratives like, you know, we're so getting used to misinformation. No. It's the boy who cried wolf. Like uh, the trumpet's going to blast and we're going to be like, ah, somebody's, you know, got a speaker out there and it's going to be, no, man, it's our calling. It's going to be real. It's going to, no. 
it's going to happen one day. Well, spe- yeah, I don't want to get us too far off track, but like, yes, I think all of us yesterday got that notification on our phones from the government, yes. right? Yes. So, I mean, it, we're living at a time where, I mean, our, our the, the government can send out like a blast that everyone knows what, what's happening. So it, it's interesting. It's yes. interesting. And that technology is like in with us like right now. Wow. It's not a Trump. I mean, it's, but it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. What if, what if God sent everybody <laughs> in the world a text message? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, talking about misinformation. So, uh, you know, we'll get into that in Second Timothy chapter 2. <laughs> but, <laughs> We're going to go too far. Yeah. But yeah, that, I, I just, all the sacrifices yeah. and, I mean, numbers is just full of like, you know, this many uh, goats and, and this this many bulls and, you know, all, all of this blood mm. that was all for That's atonement, was all for our sin. And it just shows you, you know, there's a scripture in Leviticus that says the life is in the blood. Mm. And somebody reading this that has no context of, you know, sacrifice or just like, why is... Why is God so about like animal sacrifice? And really, the animals are a substitution for us. That's why we no longer have animal sacrifice because mm-hmm. our blood was atoned in the blood that was the supreme blood of all blood, and that yep. was the blood of Christ, which was the blood of heaven mm. that that Jesus spilled his blood for us for a, a one and done. Yep. Uh, atonement for our sin, mm. that past, present, future, it's all covered in the blood of Christ. And so we don't have to do animal sacrifices, but what I think is a good thing to feature here is communion. Yeah. Because communion is our way, just like their sacrifices were a way of, of, of like bringing in their sin and having God forgive it. Our sin has already been forgiven, mm. but these feasts were about remembrance. And so communion for us is kind of like Numbers 29 wrapped up mm. in one package. And that is we're remembering Christ. So there's the remembrance aspect of all the feasts, but then we're also taking in the elements of Christ, the, the broken body, which is represented in all these animal sacrifices, the spilled blood, which is represented in all these animal sacrifices for the forgiveness of our sin. Mm. And so when we take, you know, communion, Holy Communion, the Eucharist, you know, the the, mm. the bread and, and the wine, and you don't need the little, you know, package deal to mm. have communion. You can have communion at home. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it is how you present it. So it could be, a rich cracker and some apple juice. Mm. And you're you're just like taking these these things which are honoring Christ and and having you like be mm. mindful of the forgiveness and remembering Christ. And I think that's beautiful because the more you remember the brokenness of Christ, the more you are gonna focus on your, the wholeness of you because mm. it's because of his brokenness that you can be put back together. Uh, it's his mm. spilled blood that has allowed your blood to be forgiven. And so communion, I think, is a good thing to feature as, as like a New Testament application to, to the, the Old Testament I love that. chapter. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Last thoughts, final thoughts, and we'll skip over. Yeah. I mean, that, like like Jim was saying, I mean, the, the whole Festival of Tabernacles was, was a remembrance. And um, again, that physically that came in the, they just did that. That's the, uh, what is it? The Shakut, I think is what it's called. Um, Shakutery board? Shakutery board. <laughs> but um, where they spend seven days and they actually um, remember the time that they lived in tents. Yeah. And uh, I was reading some things where today even, um, you know, Jews will go out and go camp and, and spend time in tents uh, to remember this time in, in the desert um, and to remember what it was like and to remember, again, what God did for them in the desert. And I love, the, mm. the again, the bringing it to communion. That's yeah. how we remember, um, you know, remember what, what God did for us, what Jesus did for us, um, our atonement. Um, Are the Gerguses campers? You know, Do you we, guys go in we, tents? We we used to no. Well, we were we were princess campers. We used to have a trailer. Uh, and what do they call it? Glamping now. We were glamping. So yeah, we had a we had a trailer for a while as the kids were growing up. 
We spent a lot of time up in your old neck of the woods in, in Bakersfield. Sp- well, no, not Bakersfield, <laughs> not Bakersfield. Well, although we we stopped at the In and Out off the five media time, but up in uh, like Pismo Beach and Central, oh, nice the Central Coast, yeah, and, Pismo Coast Village. Yeah. And our and our older son, who's I don't know if you'll see this or not, but our older son is taking it to a whole other level. He uh, he he tent camps on his truck on the ground. He goes off and wild adventures uh, with his friends in, in bands. So um, he's Did got- Did he get a Bronco? He's got a Bronco. <laughs> I have Bronco envy. Yeah. One of these days, Lord. Yeah. All right. So, okay, so 2 Timothy chapter two. Lots Such a rich, rich chapter. Um, the, the thing that really just right out the gate stood out to me, and you can relate to this too because of your sons. And then, you know, I, I think of your son, my son, Dylan, AJ. I think of all these like twenty somethings that are like being raised up, mm. like you know they're they're leaders, but they're also going to be the future elders of, of like carrying on Christ. Yeah. And it's like there's a commission mm. that Paul is given to Timothy to take this in and give it to entrusted men that are yes. going to be able to teach. So there's. There's like, you got to pass the baton. So Paul's like, this is great that I've raised you up. Mm-hmm. Now, Timothy, your job is to find some new people, some faithful people that are going to be able to carry this on after you're gone. Yep. And it's such a deep uh, conviction because think about it, Malad. We are always only one generation from Christianity yeah. becoming extinct. Yep. If we don't pass on mm. what we know, yes. And what Christ has taught us, and what Christ, you know, the experiences that we've had, yeah. then the next generation mm-hmm. potentially is is not going to carry this torch. Yeah. So this torch has been carried now. How many generations? You know, lots over two thousand years. Yeah, hundreds. With so thousands. a lot, <laughs> and and so now, like we're moving into that stage. Mm-hmm. Somebody's turning 50 <laughs> in a couple of weeks or you know, a couple months, actually. But but we're like in that age and stage where it's like we're becoming yeah. the village elders. Yes. No longer are we like learn. Well, we're always learning. Yeah. I can't say we ever stop learning, but there's there is this like felt you know, conviction that I at least Mm. feel like my job right now is like, obviously I'm going to keep living this, but I've got to slow down a little bit. I got to throttle back and, and like teach. Yeah. Like be so that the Josiahs and the Michaels and the Dylans and the AJs, Mm. they're going to be all like, Whoa, like this is how we are to live this out. Yeah. So they can then teach it to the next gen. Mm. So. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? I mean, I, over the last few years, I was reflecting, or even just also now, the those who invested in me and just those, mm. you know, the the early when I was in my twenties, yeah. you know, beginning with my dad, beginning with with some t- some key teachers, mm-hmm. um, you know, early you know pastors, you know, where we did, you know, you know, saw you know twenty something year olds um, yeah. who w- had a desire to to get into leadership, mm-hmm. but even just a desire um, to raise a family and, and to do things and serve around church. And pulled us in into you know leadership you know at a super young age, um, but those experiences were just so pivotal um, also along my years. But yeah, mm-hmm. thinking now it's like, oh whoa, I I am that person now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're like, in that seat. I'm in that season. I was at my my brother in law's fiftieth birthday party uh, a couple weeks ago, and you know this one one guy, he's a firefighter. He's got a young family, like really, uh, you know. Well, a well-built guy. He's like, he kept calling me sir. I'm like, stop calling me sir. <laughs> you know, I had a great conversation with him, but I'm like, okay, you know, it's like yeah. the white, the white hair. And <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, but there is a, there's something special about that too. And as as I reflect, also, I love our church. Um, again, just how it's so multi generational. Yes. You know, we have folks who are seasons, you know, yes. as Pastor Phil would say, in their 80s, and, and mm-hmm. those who are in their teens, and those all in the middle who are all coming together. And then, and then again, this is like, yeah, we're talking about the guys, but also, I mean, just seeing the women working together. Oh, and absolutely. The, and, the, and the moms and the older ladies yeah. and the younger ladies, and older ladies who are, you know, talking to younger guys. And, and I mean, in a sharing again, just what an example it is mm-hmm. to have a, a Christ-filled community sharing this all together. I, 
I also love this analogy. And as a leader in the church, I really like geeked out on this. Like he gives a an analogy that to Timothy he says, you are a good soldier, mm. right? You're a professional athlete and you're a farmer, soldier, athlete, farmer. Mm. And I started thinking about my career, my vocation, and I'm like, yeah, that that really, if I want to be a good pastor, if I want to be a good leader, it really comes back to, like, I have to have a mindset of a soldier mm. and to be single-minded. And, I, you know, I have to be a person that is like a professional athlete. Like, I have to I have to be trained well and know the rules. Because yeah. that's like, yeah, that you know, one, yeah. Paul was like, you know, a good athlete, a professional yeah. athlete is trained, yeah. but he also knows, knows the, the rules, rules. so yeah. he can't he doesn't get disqualified. Mm. And then the farmer, yeah. like every farmer I know, they're hardworking. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I see these qualities in these three examples that Paul is given and going, you know, to be a good leader, to be a good pastor, mm. I have to exhibit the qualities of a good soldier, mm. you know, a professional athlete, you know, mm. a, a good farmer. Mm. And, and if I do, I, I'm going to be able to see God do incredible things. And I, you know, as our church has grown, you know, I'm I'm having more and more opportunities the more people that I meet, mm. and you know, I, I'm thinking about a soldier is, is single minded, like you know, he's he's about the he's the business him. of his commanding officer, mm -hmm. and of course, our commanding officer is Jesus. And what God spoke to me is, don't let a good thing mm. keep you from the best thing. And I really process that. And I think that's a word for somebody mm. that's watching today. Mm. Don't let a good thing stop you or keep you from doing the best thing. Because mm. there, there's an order that has been given to us by God, our commanding officer. And then if a good thing is pulling us away from doing the thing that God wants us to do, yep. the good thing then becomes a bad thing because it's keeping you from the best thing. Yeah. And I've learned that. And, mm. and so... Tara always tells me, and you guys were laughing. I I have like seventeen hundred unread text messages. <laughs> you're on telling my phone. me, you're telling everyone. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of times in the group text, I'm just like, I don't, I don't feel like I need to respond. But some people are very OCD about yes. clearing. Yes. Like, okay, I read that text. I'm not so much. But you know, as I'm thinking about, it, like, there's so many good mm. things that mm. I want to say yes to. Right. But I know that I'm I'm only capable of doing so much because I'm limited in the day that I'm I'm given. I only have right. so many hours in a day, right. and so now I'm finding myself like I I have to say no to things, and I've learned this especially when the mm. kids were little, my mm. lad. When I say yes to one thing, I'm actually so saying, saying no, no to, to something else, yeah. and so that's I'm I'm at that I'm hitting that ceiling again as yeah. a lead pastor of this church. And we're running over a thousand people mm. on a Sunday. It's like. I can't say yes to everything because yeah. if I say yes to this, I'm saying no to this. Yeah. Yeah. And so I actually had to tell a friend of mine no to something, mm. that, which was a good thing. Right. But I, I just told him not yet. I didn't tell him no. I just mm. said not yet yeah. because I've got some other things that i got to take care of. So th that ministered to me. Mm. Being a soldier, being an athlete, athlete being, a farmer. being a farmer. Good mm. good analogies. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's those are all coming together. I mean, yeah. I, like I think we were talking earlier, it's like the, uh, verse four says, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Um, and again, this, this, there's so much around. Um, and, you know, there are others who need to be working on civilian, you know, affairs. Mm -hmm. But again, when we're called to, um, especially in these key areas of leadership, being a pastor, being a leader, mm -hmm. then again, like the, the primary responsibility is like Jesus is a commanding officer mm -hmm. for the people, for the church, for mm -hmm. the, um, and what what is the key that's going to be what God's calling us for atmosphere church or, or those who he's entrusted us with or our family. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's I mean, those of us who are parents, fathers, uh, mothers, um, our primary responsibility is our family. Yeah. And there's, again, so many things around. Uh, that we can get distracted with, but um, you know that primary responsibility. This is kind of like being a, a good athlete, right? Getting into the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. we're training. Yeah. It's like you know, strength and conditioning coach. You yeah. know, comes along a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Like it's not about game day. It's yeah. about everything you're How doing. You 
how you're prepping for game day mm-hmm. that re- really makes a difference for game day. Yeah. You know, if you're not putting in the work, you're not strengthening your body, yeah. then you're not going to play well on game day. So this is like strengthening our body, like opening the Bible every day as, as, as an exercise, right? Prayer, exercising, like you're training mm-hmm. yourself in these ways. So good job for tuning in and opening the Bible, but don't don't just do it on Thursdays and Sundays. Do it every day. Well, maybe just this like nugget that just came in. It's like our training is not enough for somebody else. We can't watch somebody else train. We have to be the Ooh, one. We, we just had, so that's a little, good. That's oh, a good I'll little. Just, I'll just send that. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so we can't we can't be an armchair. Uh, you know, sitting on our couch watching others. Yeah, we uh, can't watch the. Uh, you know, those videos, you know, the circuit training, all that, right, like, right. You know, and they were going, you're like, yeah, yeah they're yeah, working on <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my I'm donuts. I'm work out, <laughs> watching them work out. Right, right. We got we to gotta put in the time. And, uh, yeah. My final thought, because we're already a minute over, but my final thought, and I'll let you have a final thought, is he's, he's talking about don't get caught up in all this quarreling. Yeah, that's going to be uh, Like, I really think, like, Paul saw a portal into Facebook. Uh, when he's writing this, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he's seeing 2023. Uh, and Malat, I can't tell you how many times on social media, this is the bad side of social media, where I see somebody just post something. And I'm just like, you know, we all have a platform now to like speak our mind, like and write it out. And I have like written out responses so many times and I'm about ready to hit send and I delete it. Yeah. Because I'm like, what's the point? Like, why am I going to get into a quarrel? Because I have an opposing view. And I've not met one person that has been convinced to change their view because somebody responded to something they posted on Facebook. I haven't, maybe you're one of them, but to me, our energy can be better spent in other things than quarreling on social media about a topic, especially politics mm. and COVID and vaccines or jabs or whatever they call it. It's just like, why like, why even feel the you know the necessity to rant about this stuff? I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. Uh, you know, I think the, the need to feel heard mm. will go down exponentially if you turn the news <laughs> off. Turn it off and you won't feel so like, ah, I'm so frustrated. You know, you, you, it is frustrating because you yeah. can't do yeah. a whole lot uh, except vote. And, uh, you know, so that's anyway, that's, yeah. that's my rant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, and my similar thing, I mean, that was at the end. I mean, um, it's quarreling, but I mean, we quarrel in the church. Yep. That's um, true. And the idea, you know, against quarreling about words, you know, and we, you know, a lot of times you see it and you see this With person. Theology. Yeah, theology and, and, and folks love, there's people that love to take some area of like obscure theology, um, the giants and what they were and they're like, well, sit there and like try to slice it and dice it. And, and that's fine. That's great if like you're really into that. And, but then like to expect everybody else to know all everything about it. And like, that's going to be like the thing you set up your like church around or you're yeah. like, that's who yeah. you are. But again, the Bible is clear and is like, you know, don't quarrel against like words. Um, you know, we need to handle the the word of truth, like major on the majors. Mm-hmm. Again, like the, the major things, um, avoiding godless chatter. Um, and, uh, and also the idea somewhere, where did I go? And if you get caught up in it, he's saying it'll, it's going to lead to more ungodliness. It's going to lead to more ungodliness um, that we must, in, uh, I think it's somewhere in here, um, instructing, you know, gently. Um, and at the end, like to flee the evil desires of our youth, to pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, um, pure heart. Um, you know, he says again, go, do away with foolish and stupid arguments. Because they produce quarrels. Um, don't be quarrelsome. I mean, like three times, he, you know, he says, don't be quarrelsome. Here it is at the end. He said, opponents must be gently instructed that God will grant them repentance. So it's, it's God, not us. I mean, mm. I think, again, that's the, that's the thing. It's gentleness, love, and ultimately, it's, it's God. We're not going to To your opponents. To our opponents. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I have had these uh, debates and this sounds bad, but it's just like there are these Christians that feel like they their gifting is in debating. And they just go on there. I'm like, don't be a master debater. But that sounds terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. But they, but they are just like, 
What's the point? Yes. It's not loving. Yes. It's just like, I want to show you that I'm right and you're wrong and over trivial stuff. Mm. And uh, the one camp, and I won't mention what kind of theology it is, but they're probably the most obnoxious out of all of them. And I was engaging for a little while uh, when I first understood how toxic they were. I was like, these guys need to be checked by somebody. Mm. It's like a bully coming on campus. Yeah. I'm the guy that's like, I'm gonna shut the bully down. Right. And then I came after the bully, and then the bully started coming after me, and I was like, do I sit here and just fight with the bully? Uh, or do I just pray for them, love them? Right. And then it just, so this chapter really convicted mm. me in that season of my life, and I backed off. Yeah. And, it, and just my time is well better spent mm. uh, ministering to people, especially people that are hurting and broken and exactly. and want, want to be loved and want to know that God loves them. Right. So. Way better time spent there than debating these guys that have a different view of theology than you do. Yeah. Truth and love. Yeah. Truth and love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're out of time. Again, I went over time. It's Malat's fault. <laughs> we, we, kept, we kept it a little. <laughs> yes, that's true. It's not 40 minutes already, but it's getting there. But hey, uh, pray us out, man. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for anybody that's watching here that, that needs to be lifted up, you know, Throw us a, a prayer request on there, too. And we're not just going to pray for you. Uh, other mm. people will, too. So, yeah, let's pray together. Absolutely. Again, Heavenly Father, just um, thank you for this time this morning. Thank you for um, just, again, seasons. Thank you for um, just the, the trumpet mm. blast that began. Yes. And, and just thank you that, that, again, you reign on high, mm -hmm. um, that your word is alive and active. And, and um, just thank you how it just nourishes our soul. And Father, we just pray that just for that soul nourishing today, mm -hmm. um, that again, your, your breath, your spirit, your yes. word would just um, fill, fill us to the depths um, and uh, let us just go in joy. Let us go in peace. Let us go just with a, just, I guess, a spring in our step, but, mm -hmm. but um, that joy overflowing uh, in us today as, as our soul is full of you and full of your truth. And uh, so, Father... Um, just have fun with us today as we yes, often pray. Yes. Um, may, may folks experience healing. May they experience transformation. Uh, may you touch someone right now who is um, just feeling depressed, uh, feeling, mm. feeling anxious, uh, feeling concerned about yes. what the day is going to hold, what their meeting is going to be like today, yes. what their conversation is going to be like today. Um, just bring peace, bring serenity, Father, and just bring a revelation of just that, mm -hmm. that, that there is a breakthrough um, that only can come from you, Father. We believe you, we trust you, and we love you, Jesus, and in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good prayer, man. I, I really felt that. Like somebody that's watching, that was mm. for you. That was a, a heavenly revelation. I call it a heavy revy yeah. uh, for you today. So uh, thanks for joining us. And then we'll be back here Thursday. We'll be online on Sunday. And then Saturday, my lad, is like the trifecta of sports. <laughs> I got the Sooners playing Texas. Go Sooners. We got Dodgers, first so game Dodgers. of the playoffs, right? And then we have the Lakers playing the Warriors in its preseason, but still, it's like... It's all starting. It's all starting. October is the <laughs> sports month, baby. Uh, so love you guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.